Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and today welcome back to the servicing table for another servicing tutorial. Now several years ago, I can't remember exactly how long ago, but uh, I did a video showing exactly how to service one of the Hornby Ringfield motor units. And uh, today I thought I would sort of improve on that video and uh, create a new fresh one, not only to show you how to service the motor unit, but how to service an entire loco, for example. So I've got a high mech here which I'm going to demonstrate. Also, my method of servicing locos like this has changed very slightly so I also wanted to make a new video uh, to update it for that reason as well. So let's get started then. Uh, first thing I always do and I would always recommend it as well is to take a paintbrush and uh, just uh, clean the dust off the loco like this and I always like to do this uh, just because it does such a good job of getting into all the gaps. Also if you're going to dust the underframe I would suggest using a different paintbrush uh, just because it will get oily and then you don't want to be transferring that oil onto the bodywork. Right, so first of all then, you'll be pleased to know that there is, well, with most of these Hornby Ringfield locos, it's almost never necessary to remove the body, and I know that will please a lot of people because it's a right pain, isn't it, to remove bodywork. You can do most of these, 90% of these locos, uh, without removing the body, and by the way, I am just showing a high mech here, but it will work for most of the Hornby Ringfield diesels. So, the first thing I would suggest doing... Uh, this is a, a bit of a troubleshoot, so if your loco is running badly, this is the first thing I would suggest to do because it's, it's the easiest. So you need to take a sort of flat bladed screwdriver, uh, like this one for example, and we're first going to take out the non-driven bogey. And all you do is you just push it at one end, normally at the uh, sort of back end, if that's if that's the front, that's the back, uh, and you just uh, flip the bogey out like this. Now the first thing you want to look for is if we take a look at this wire here, you want to make sure that this is not wobbling all over the place, uh, because sometimes when they're not tight, uh, they will cause a bad connection and that will cause the bad running. Now as you can see, I, that was true with this one, I've soldered it in, but all you need to do really is if it's not tight and it's loose and wobbling around, you need to take the plug off, get a little pair of uh, pliers like this and just gently squeeze the contacts together and then force it back onto the chassis where it came from which should tighten that up and uh, often that is enough to fix bad running. Also wheel cleaning is a big one but I'll do that once we've serviced it. So once you've uh, found out that, that isn't the issue, once you've determined that that is not the problem and uh, you know if you're doing just a, a whole service you'll want to move on anyway. Uh, now we'll take out the other bogey uh, which of course has to be the driven bogey. So same method, we'll take this out. Now if this hasn't been messed around with, uh, you should just be able to unplug it directly. Sometimes you get people that have soldered things together and if they have then bad luck, you might just have to desolder. But no, with this one it is in as new condition, so I've been able to disconnect the motor, which is great because uh, now it's not uh, held in by any wires. I would also recommend only taking out one bogey at a time because otherwise this uh, wire could get sort of lost inside the model, especially if it's a larger one, and then you will have to end up taking the body off. Right, so first things first then, we need to free the Ringfield motor unit from its housing and to do that once again I will use my uh, flat bladed screwdriver. So to find out which end to lever we need to flip this over and look for the largest clip. So if you look here you can see the clip just here is quite a small one and the clip here is quite a large one, hopefully you can see that. So you want to go with the large one and it's just a case of easing the screwdriver in, pushing down and uh, lifting the motor out. That one came out quite easy. Sometimes they are a little bit more difficult to get out than that, but uh, normally it's not too bad. Now I'm going to try and be super, super thorough today. Um, you don't have to be this thorough, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do this in the you know most thorough possible way. Uh, but if some of these steps don't seem necessary to you, you can miss out some or all of them. Well, if you miss out all of them, there's not much point, but uh, yeah, you know, use your initiative. And once you've done a few of these, you'll get to know uh, what's worth doing. But I'm just cleaning this up, and as you can see, there was a little bit of dirt on it. Not necessary for good running, but uh, it just keeps the model nice, doesn't it? Right, so the first thing we're going to do is take out the gears. Let's show this. In fact, if I zoom in with this camera and adjust the focus, uh, you'll be able to get a much better view of what I'm doing here. Right, so the first thing you do is you just get your fingernails underneath this clip, lift it up and forwards like that, and then that comes out of the way. A lot of the time these are absolutely filthy, so you need to clean those up, and I would recommend cleaning that every time. Uh, if it's not been serviced for sort of 30 years and you've just bought it second hand, then no doubt this will be really cacked up. This one gets serviced, well I've had this one for a few years now, so it's been serviced before and, and it's not filthy. But uh, yeah, I would just recommend cleaning these up, and I use IPA by the way, uh, look up IPA or... Uh, 
uh, isopropyl alcohol on eBay. You can get gigantic bottles of it really quite inexpensively. Okay, so the next thing to do is lift out the gears. They should all have four gears. I don't think there are any of these Hornby Ringfield styles that uh, have any more than four. Uh, but I suppose it's not impossible. Lift those out very gently. And I like to give those gears a little bit of a clean up as well. So let me zoom out again. And I just get a hanky. You can use your cotton buds again, but uh, I just prefer to use a hanky usually. Uh, so you can wet it with your IPA which just helps to get the grime off. Again, if this is something that's been serviced reasonably regularly, it's unlikely to, that the gears are going to be that filthy, but uh, it's nice just to make sure they're clean. So there we go. Yeah, these don't look too dirty at all, but uh, better to be safe than sorry, I would say. There we go, nice clean looking gears. And again, if it's not been serviced for a long time, there's all sorts of muck and uh, nastiness that you could find on those. But uh, I was quite lucky that uh, there wasn't with that one. Now, once again, if this hasn't been serviced for a long time, you'll find a lot of debris on the side of the chassis here. So I would suggest having a pair of tweezers to hand to get rid of the worst of it. And if not, I would just also get your IPA and just scrub this area. And that will get rid of any surface dirt. And again, it will remove some of that debris. You really don't want any debris around this area because of course that's where the gears have to sit and it's also worth just visually inspecting that this gear uh, isn't uh, covered in hair or whatever you want to get that off if it is now loads of people ask me about this uh, these gears on certain models um, not all of them uh, but certain models with these gears these gears can come loose and uh, they can just cause the motor to spin but the wheels not to in those cases and I'm not going to do that with this no, nope, this one is just fine. What you need to do is take off the gear, clean it thoroughly with IPA or whatever you use, clean the shaft as well to make sure there's no uh, oil or anything on that, and then put a very, very small blob of glue on the inside of the shaft, on the inside of the gear even, and then shove the gear home, and then finish it off by just putting another little blob of super glue on the top. Now, extreme caution with that, because if you get glue onto the actual shaft where the bearing is, uh, it's gonna seize the thing up. So very, very small amounts of glue on there, and that should it. Also you can buy a replacement gear if you want to, but uh, yeah, I prefer to do this. I've done that for a few years. I suppose it's slightly botch worthy, but it does do the trick. Right, so now we're going to service the actual motor itself, and to do that we first need to disconnect this connector, which connects it to the chassis, and then we're going to take the brushes out. So, very carefully I'm going to lever up this. Sometimes these will be screwed on, in which case you need to unscrew them and that will release the uh, the face of the uh, motor. And then very carefully you need to lift out the spring and brush. As you can see the brush has come out with this. It might not always do that, you might need to turn it onto its back and smack it like that. Uh, so there we go, I am going to separate the brush and spring this time. And then what I do is I take the lid of my IPA, I pour a little bit of IPA into the lid, you only want a drop. Uh, pop that over here where I'm not going to disturb it and just drop the spring and the brush in there and that will eat away any nastiness that's uh, building up on those. Let's grab the other then. There we are. There we go. Once again the brush did come out with the spring but don't always assume that will. And then if the uh, brushes didn't come out with the springs at this point you'd do a bit of that and try and get it out. Now with some of these you'll be very very lucky and you'll notice that the wheels here are not obstructing the front of the motor from coming off. Unfortunately with this one it looks as though the wheels are in the way so I'm going to have to remove them. Now this is quite optional, I mean if you really wanted to you could try and clean the commutator by shoving a cotton bud under here but you do, the run, you do run the risk of the cotton bud shedding some of its cotton and making a mess inside the mechanism. So this is what I do instead. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a press or something like that, then this job is very easy. But of course, most of us don't have an expensive press. So all you're going to need really, I mean, you can improvise your own solutions, but you have to be sort of erring on the side of caution. Uh, so what you need is a vice like this, a table vice. This was a very cheap one, but it does do the trick. You also want a gear puller like this, and it's very handy to have a gear puller for pulling gears, but we're not actually going to use it for its intended purpose uh, today. We're just going to use it uh, to knock out some of the axles on these wheels. So I'm going to select a bit that looks similar in diameter to the axle. And then the scary tool. Uh, da -da, is the hammer. So again, err on the side of caution here. You don't want to be destroying your expensive models. Or not so expensive as the case may be, but nonetheless, it's, uh, believe me, it's not nice to destroy models. 
So, we clamp this in the vise. If you can clamp it like this, I would do. But as you can see, my vise is just a little bit too tight, and if you tighten this up, it will destroy the gear that's on these wheels. So I'm going to do it this way with mine. And this bit takes quite a lot of practice. You want to get the vise nice and tight, but don't crush the, uh, the chassis. I've never actually done that, but I feel that it might be possible to warp or even shatter the chassis if you tighten the vise too much. So you want it tight so that it doesn't move, but not so tight that you're going to destroy the thing. Like I say, it's never happened, but uh, that's always because I've been careful. So then you hold the bit in place, and this is fiddly. I mean, uh, some people are going to struggle with this, as I did, but uh, practice makes perfect or near perfect. So you hold that in. I like to support the bogey so that it doesn't turn when I start tapping it with the hammer. And then you don't really have to hit this hard. You just have to hit it reasonably gently. And it sometimes takes a few goes. And if you're gentle enough, actually, to be honest, these axles have been knocked in quite a long way. There we go. So that's one out. And the axle and the other wheel have dropped to the ground, which is okay. So there we go, and this is a great opportunity, by the way, to clean out any hair or muck that uh, can build up on the inside of the wheel there. So I'm going to put that to one side, and it doesn't matter which one goes in where, so it doesn't matter if you mix them up. Let's do the other one then. We are hold this in. Like I say, it is awkward, and because these have been knocked in quite a long way, I can't rest this punch piece uh, on the axle itself. Normally the wheel will be not set perfectly onto the axle, which means you can uh, sort of sit it in a little groove, but that's not the case with this one. So I'm going to have to just try and hold this in place, which is almost certainly not going to go well, but uh, we'll try. Yep, it's going through. There we go, oh it's the other wheel I lost that time. Right, so the hammer can go to one side now, that's no longer needed. And I'll grab the wheel that fell to the ground. And I think what we'll do is we'll deal with the wheels first of all. So let's grab that, let's grab the other axle, the other wheel, and we'll take a look at the condition. So as I say, sometimes you can find a right old mess uh, when you take these wheels out. Sometimes it will reveal all sorts of hairs and things depending on how the previous owners treated them. This one's not too bad and I'm pretty sure I've had these apart before, which is why it's not looking too dirty. But as you can see, quite a bit of dirt building up there. Don't know why everything's gone yellow on this particular camera. Uh, I think it's something to do with the white balance. But it should have been set to... Uh manual so I'm not sure why it's done that and also obviously these models do transmit power through the axles to the chassis so it's reasonably important that you clean the axles now you normally don't get much of a problem so if you're not taking the axles out I wouldn't recommend doing it just to clean them but uh, since we are it's not going to hurt to clean them and it will just make that connection all the more reliable so there we go I wouldn't suggest filing these or anything although I suppose you could use the Dremel on them uh, which I'll talk about in a minute uh, to shine them up, but uh, yeah, you don't want to be uh, making a rough surface on those axles, otherwise it's not going to run well. These axles are quite dirty. Another thing is, unless you've got some sort of electro lube, I wouldn't recommend oiling these axles either, because the bearings are so good that they, uh, they don't cause a lot of friction. And again, you don't want to be using anything that's going to insulate these axles. So there we go, those are the wheels nice and clean. Now let me introduce the chassis back, and now of course we can clean up the uh, sort of bearings, which normally are quite dirty once again. So there we are, a bit of IPA on those, it means that we can actually clean the lower part of the chassis. It actually gives you the opportunity to be much more thorough if you do take out the axles. But again, it's not a nice job, I admit, so there we go. Right. Now that the wheels are out of the way, then it should be easy and uh, possible just to prise the front of this off. So we'll just get the screwdriver hooked under there like that at both ends, and it should just pop out of the way. Again, be careful with this piece because you don't want to ruin it, but uh, it shouldn't put up too much of a fight at least. And there we go. So you want to clean this piece up. Uh, pay particular attention to the bearing and at the place where the brushes come through because they do need to be good and clean. So that's the bearing there, if you want to call it a bearing, it's just a plastic hole really. And then the brush area as well, they need to be good and clean. And I would suggest cleaning those on both sides as well. There we go. And also pay close attention to these, these are the brush retainers, and they have to be quite clean. Uh, you can file those if you want to, although the ones on mine are still shining, so I'm just going to pass it up with a little bit of a cotton bud swipe there and uh, finally just clean up the insides of it there so there's no muck 
There we go, that looks good. Now then, let's pay attention to the actual commutator itself. And uh, there it is, as you can see, the high mech does get run quite a bit on my channel, which is why it's looking rather dirty there. So let's pay some attention to that and get it clean. And I'm going to show you one of my secrets in a second to getting these really good and clean. So first of all, we're going to use the cotton bud here just to clean that off. And as you can see, that is doing quite a good job. And I'm going to clean the cotton, change the cotton bud even, and continue to clean it. Now, sometimes you'll do this and you'll find that they're just not looking clean afterwards. And we're sort of getting that with this one. Uh, I've been cleaning this now, and if you're lucky, you'll get this to look really, really good and clean uh, just by cleaning it with the cotton bud. But unfortunately, that isn't always the case. And I'm going to show you what you can do in those situations. So it's cleaned, but it's still got a little bit of black on it. And that is where the Dremel comes into use. So first of all, if you're going to use the Dremel or anything like that, the first thing you need is a pair of safety goggles. I would strongly recommend against using any sort of power tool um, without goggles on. And what I'm going to be using, it's not actually a Dremel, it's this. It's a Draper rotary tool or something like that. It only cost me about 20 quid. It is very cheap and cheerful and it's not as good as a Dremel brand one. However, it's doing the job. I've had this for two or three years now, and even if I have to replace it now, having used it for two or three years, I will have had my money's worth out of it. Like I say, it only cost me 20 quid. So look at these on Amazon if you'd like to. And I've got the wire brush, or wire wheel, I'm not exactly what the proper term is on here, and I've got it set to a sort of moderate to slow speed. And mind your headphones if you're wearing headphones. There we go. And before putting this near any of your models, I would strongly recommend just sort of getting used to using the thing before you uh, go there. So, just a word of caution, watch your fingers, don't let this thing touch your fingers while it's spinning because it's lethal, and also don't let it touch any delicate parts of the bodywork or the solder joints on a model uh, in any way, because it will be liable to ruin them. So I'm going to hold this securely, again, just remember to keep your fingers out of the way. And here we go, I'm going to clean the commutator. Okay, that looks good to me. So, yeah, it's a very, very abrasive process, that. So I would only recommend doing that where necessary. And I service my models every year, but I don't do that every year. I do it every two or three years, only where necessary, because it will have quite a, a sort of wearing effect on the commutator here. Uh, and also the wire wheels that I've just shown you, they do sort of go bad after a while, they get dirty and you'll find that they don't clean the commutators as well as they ought to. And at that point you just need to replace it and I think again I bought about 30 of them from eBay. Uh, you want to get reasonably good quality ones if you can because uh, they do sort of shed their little bits of... Uh, I don't know what it is, wire, <laughs> let's call it. Uh, they do shed little bits of wire if they are cheap ones and they can go in the eye. But again, if you're wearing safety goggles, that shouldn't be too bad. But equally, you don't want bits of wire going into the carpet or wherever you are because they do have a habit of working their way into the soles of feet, which isn't very nice. So once you've done that, you want to clean the commutator again with a cotton bud just to get any excess off. And as you can see there, that is looking very good. Now, if you want to, you can measure adjacent... Um, plates of the armature here uh, with the multimeter uh, to check that the resistances are very very close to being equal on all of them. I'm not going to do that this time because I'm a bit short for time now, we've been going on for quite a while, um, but yeah if you've got a concern that the motor is on its last legs then I would certainly suggest checking that out. Right then, let's get this thing reassembled. So first of all we're going to put on the, uh, the motor bracket here. I don't know why I called it a motor bracket. Uh, this should just click into place, but uh, sometimes they are a little bit awkward to get fitted. But there we are, that's going on. Uh -huh. Very nice. And then don't forget to reattach this metal piece like this. Now, before you return the brushes into their place, I would suggest putting the wheels back in. So I'm going to do that right now. And uh, rather than messing around with a gauge or anything like that, I just use the vise again. And again, just be careful, and uh, this will almost certainly go just fine. 
Uh, and obviously if it goes wrong, you can just tap it out again and start again. But uh, this is what I do. So I get them in flat. This means that they're automatically going to be level because the vice will push them in level. And uh, just push them in a little way until it looks good to you. I think that could go a little bit further because there's a bit too much give on there. The chassis won't allow it to be pushed much too far, but it will bite against the chassis if it is gone too far. So there we go, that looks good. There's a little bit of give on there which you want, but not too much. And obviously make sure you're getting these in the right way. The gears need to be on the gear side. Uh, but yeah, so sometimes, no doubt, if you do this a few times, you'll end up realising that you've put one on the wrong way. But don't worry, it happens to everybody. There we are, got that one spot on straight away. So now that I'm happy with those, I know I'm not going to be tapping these axles back out again, so I can move on and put the brushes back in. So as always, maximum caution when you're messing around with these springs because they do have a, a, a really crazy habit of just popping off and disappearing into the distance and they are ridiculously hard to find again. However, luckily they are very cheap to buy, uh, which is great. Uh, just look them up on eBay if you want to have some spares. I've got a huge box of spares uh, just in case I lose them, although these days I don't lose them because I'm so used to them pinging away I've tried to be careful but uh, having said that I'm probably going to lose one now aren't I so there we are that's the uh, the spring nice and clean I'm also going to do the same with the brush just to remove any excess you don't want to be filing the brushes really because unless they're out of shape you don't want to be wearing them away unnecessarily so the brush goes in first I'll try and show this so pick one doesn't matter which way they go in which side, I should say, the brush needs to go in the right way, but it should be fairly obvious which way that is. The uh, spring needs to stand on top of the brush, and then you just want to fold this flap down or screw the flap back into place, depending on what model you've got, and make sure it goes in nicely. And I always like to sort of push them in at the top like this, just so that there's no chance that that spring will pop out again. So let's get the other one. And also, if it runs badly, try pushing this uh, sort of retainer a little bit upwards, relieve some of the pressure on it, because sometimes that can cause unnecessary friction, but most of the time I find that it's just fine to push them all the way in. But there we are. Clean the brush again, there we are. Clean the springs. The springs do get a bit scummy, but having had a little bath in the IPA like that, they, den they tend to come out nice and clean, which is exactly what you want. So let's retain the brush replace the brush, pop the spring back in place and then very carefully bend that down and yes luckily nothing popped away that time which is great. So now before you put the rest of the uh, gears back in I would suggest giving this a little bit of oil and giving it a spin up just to make sure that it's working. So here we go, a little bit of oil on the front here, a little bit on the back. I would be very very careful about putting oil on the front, only a tiny tiny drop there because if oil gets onto the commutator it can cause serious problems. So here we have just a train controller or a power supply or whatever you want to use on the other end of these crocodile leads. And this just means if there's a problem with the motor you'll know about it before you go to all the effort of putting the gears back in. There we are. 5 or 6 volts is normally enough to do it and as you can see that's running quite nicely and it will quite distressingly dirty up the commutator quite quickly but that is fairly normal. And as you can see there's no sparks or anything coming out of this because it's all nice and clean and all the connections are good. Obviously the more load you put on the more likelihood there is to see big sparks but uh, without a load there shouldn't be a lot. If there are that could mean that there's a problem with the windings. So that's good, happy with that, that seems to run just fine. So now very quickly let's replace the gears and all you do is you get your oil again Put a little blob on each of these pegs. Return the smaller gears first. Again, it doesn't really matter which way they face, but I put this sort of text on them on the outside just so that it doesn't rub against the chassis. A little bit of gear, a little bit of gear, a little bit of oil on these gears, a little bit on the top. Replace the main gears here. And again, you want to put a little bit of oil on those as well. like that. It'll have a way of working itself in, so that's just fine. And then you need to find the spring, or whatever it is that holds the gears in place, 
and you want to just carefully put that in. If it won't go in on its own, you just want to lever it up like that. Yeah, again, that's another piece that takes a bit of practice getting in, but that's fine. So then you sit it upside down like this. Connect power again, and we'll use this opportunity to clean the wheels. And again, feel free to use the Dremel on the metal wheels if they are particularly dirty and they're not coming clean, uh, but mine look okay, so I'm not going to be doing that. So I always recommend doing the wheel cleaning last because once you put oil on these gears it does have a habit of finding its way onto the traction tyres so you don't want it to be on the track for that. So give it a little bit of a thrash, take it up to 12 volts if you dare just to see how it goes. You can see that really does go. As you can see all of that oil is coming off onto the piece of paper. There we are, take it back down. And let's clean first of all the wheels without the traction tyres and of course they're the wheels that do the picking up so it's important that they're clean, very important. There we are. And then finally once it's had a good run you clean the traction tyres. Which normally are the dirtiest because they have a real habit of picking up muck. So that looks alright to me do that once more, let's get a new cotton bud. There we go. And that looks good to me. Uh, obviously if the wheels keep coming up dirty I would suggest just keep doing that until they're coming up clean, but that looks good to me. So we can reassemble and luckily the reassembly is very easy. Uh, you just once again look for which is the smaller lug, on this one it's that. You put that into the smaller socket and then you just squeeze the two until they click. And then you just need to grab the body once again. Find the wire that you disconnected, pull that out. Reconnect it if you can, it can be a little bit fiddly, but that's gone on just fine. Then you hook the body back in at the back. Oh, interestingly, it was the other side with this, so you need to look which one bends. Oh, and I'll tell you what I forgot as well. I haven't cleaned the other set of wheels, and as you can see, this is the side with traction tyres, so you know that it's these that pick up. So you need to make sure that those are good and clean. Again, feel free to use the Dremel if you want to, but uh, be very careful not to let it touch the plastic. And I can see that these are a little bit dirty looking actually. And uh, once again, they're not coming up too clean. So I will very briefly demonstrate how you clean these with the Dremel. Or the Draper, as mine is. Right, so again, very careful not to touch any plastic because this will eat the plastic. But here we go. And often the wheels will turn themselves, so you don't even have to turn them, and that also means that you're getting a nice, smooth application. And uh, then, obviously, you'll want to re-clean the wheels, and you'll find that actually that leaves them looking absolutely brand new. I'm not going to do that on the other side, because the other side doesn't pick up. Some of them do, but uh, not this one. So there we go. That is it. That is how you service uh, Hymec or any Ringfield diesel. And uh, if you try this and it works, do let me know in the comments. I know a lot of people did last time and it was lovely to hear. But for now, folks, thank you for watching. Hope that helps and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody.